Uh, so the message there from <laughs> Lloyd Austin and indeed Jens Stoltenberg was that Ukraine will be supported for as long as it takes. What message do you think that sends to Vladimir Putin? It's very important because actually um, defending Ukraine is equals defending all the Eastern European countries, um, like the Baltic states, Finland, Poland, because Putin is actually threatening all of the Eastern European countries. And uh, if we give up on uh, some provinces in uh, Ukraine, like Luhansk or Donetsk, then he will never stop until he reaches the North Sea. So we, we don't have a choice. Putin started the war, he can end it, but we have not a choice uh, to give up on the Ukraine provinces. And that's what, he's want, what he wants. That's the reason why he is threatening the West, to make us scared. And we heard yesterday um, that NATO said the, the barrage of rocket strikes from Russia in Ukraine over the last few days has further galvanized NATO uh, and further united them. Has Russian aggression once again played into Ukraine's hands? Yeah, th that's true. Actually, I think that the political um, fault line is shifting from uh, the fault line between the East and the West to a fault line between democratic countries and uh, authoritarian countries. And NATO is stronger than ever and will become stronger and stronger because more and more democratic countries will team up against dictatorships and more and more countries will become democratic countries to uh, because they want to become a member of NATO. And I think that is a, a good evolution. So actually Putin is helping us getting NATO stronger. And the issue of uh, nuclear weapons was addressed again today. Jens Stoltenberg uh, promising that Russia would suffer severe consequences. Uh, the EU's top diplomat, Josep Borrell, went one step further. He said Russian forces would be annihilated uh, by Western military force if they used nuclear weapons. Just expand a little bit, if you can, please, on on what that actually means. Well, actually, I cannot comment on the strategies of the EU or the NATO, but what I do know is uh, that Europe is and the West is becoming more and more independent of the Russian energy and, and other Russian goods. So um, when the West is becoming more and more independent, uh, that means that the democratic Western countries are becoming stronger together. And... Um, I mean independent, like we are investing in, uh, in in solar panels, wind energy. There are even some new nuclear plants in Europe. And uh, there is also the American shale gas. And all these things added up uh, make that Europe is becoming really strong and more independent of Russia. So Russia is only isolating itself uh, from uh, the West and, and the democratic countries. But what we have not seen for years of, or not wanted to see is that Russia has becoming more and more autocratic and more and more communistic country. Um, actually, Putin even changed the flags of, uh, for instance, Belarus. He changed the flag to the flag uh, of, of what it was during the Soviet Union. So, um, you know, these oligarchs and all these state-owned companies, uh, actually, it's, it's a form of communism. It has nothing to do with the free market economics. And uh, Putin was very successful in luring some um, democratic presidents into believing that Russia had become a free market economy, but it, it has not. Uh, if the, these energy companies and other companies are state-owned and a share of it is given to an oligarch, then this is a state-owned company with, uh, that you have. If you look at the yachts of the oligarchs, who works on the, on the yachts? Who is the personnel? It's uh, personnel of the state of Russia, of the Russian Federation. So this is not uh, free market economics and it has not been for years.